This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at tips, tricks, and techniques inside Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to replace a blown out window using a Luma key. I want to show you how to replace a blown out window, but minimize the amount of masking that you have to do, which allows us to get the window replaced faster. Let me illustrate. This is a blown out window which means it's overexposed. Look in the timeline and notice that there are two clips. On the top layer is the subject properly exposed. On the bottom layer is the window without the subject where the window is properly exposed. This technique only works where there's a huge contrast between the foreground and the background. For instance, here I've got the white background. To get rid of that background, I'm going to key it out with a Luma key, which keys based on brightness, not based on color. Because it's a key, I won't have to draw a mask except for the areas that don't survive the key. Let me illustrate. Select the clip, go to keying, Luma keyer. I'm going to hide the background by selecting it and typing the letter V to turn off visibility. There's two ways that we can key. We can key out the darker area or key out the lighter area. So I'm going to select this and we're going to invert it so it keys out the lighter area. Don't panic, it looks bad, but we're going to tweak it. Grab these sliders and drag this until we start to see his face. Now this becomes impossible to figure out what you're doing unless you change the view. See these three icons here. This shows the source clip. This shows the clip with all its transparency, but this shows the mask. That which is white will be preserved. That which is black will get rid of. I'm going to grab the slider and drag it until his face goes as solid white as I can get it. Right about there. Then I'm going to grab this setting and adjust it until the background goes solid black because I've got to have the background disappear. And that's exactly what I've done. The background is now gone and I'm holding a key everywhere except right here where it's getting a lot of highlights from the window and I haven't had to set a single mask. Now I'll twirl down mask tools and check to see if I can fill in a few holes here and doesn't help a whole lot. Change the edge distance, see if that helps. Doesn't make a big difference, but I had to check and what I do is I grab these things and play with them to see which of any of these will help and shrink expand seems to be giving me a hand here, so I'll take that. So now I just have this one edge to fix. All right, so how are we going to do that? Now we apply the draw mask. The mask only needs to represent this very limited part of his face where I'm not holding the key. So let's see the finished version right there. We'll set a control point here. And I'm going to be really careful and set a control point right there and make sure this has got the shape of the curve that I want. There we go. And then again, I'll do this quickly. And then we'll click another control point right up here, draw the shape of his head. But because I don't have to worry about the rest of this, I'm going to draw a control point down here and connect it. So now I only have one, two, three, four points I have to worry about. And yeah, that ear is bad, but for right now we're going to let that live just because I want to show you the technique. And now I look at this and I say, wait a minute. I'm missing much of his face. So what we do here is the same thing we did with our, our Asian dancer. We copy the clip. Option, drag up, select the bottom clip, take off the draw mask, because the draw mask only goes on the top clip, the Luma keyer on the bottom clip. The top clip just has the draw mask, which is picking up this part of his face. The bottom clip just has the Luma keyer, which is getting rid of the background. Then, when I turn the background on, we see the properly exposed background behind him, the key on the middle layer, and the mask on the top layer. And we only have to worry about that part of his face where we're losing the mask, which is just those couple points here. Now as he moves, I only need to adjust a very few number of mask control points, not the entire mask. 
Next, we need to remove the extra chair because we shot it twice, once with him sitting in it and once as the background plate. I should have pulled it from the background plate. To do that, select the bottom layer, go up to Transform, and adjust the scale. That would be a bit much till the chair disappears. Pull our Y value down so I see the top of it. Scale it back just a bit. I'm just adjusting it till the chair is gone. There it is. There we go. We got rid of the background chair, which shouldn't have been there when we shot the background plate. We've solved the key, and we don't have tons of keyframes to work with. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at tips, tricks, and techniques inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 206. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,400 movies, hundreds of hours, all in depth and all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks 